Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and here we're today talking about Panda 3D Game Engine. What is Panda 3D? Well, it is a completely free, open source, cross-platform, C++-based, Python-powered game engine. And if it's sounding kind of familiar, well, there's probably a reason behind that. If you've been following this channel for a little bit of time, a few months back I did a series called The Others, focusing on some slightly lesser known game engines, and Panda 3D was definitely one of them. And today we're talking about it again because Panda 1.10 was just released. On top of that, they also did a whole re brand updated their website just made things look more modern and nice uh, so that's why we're today we're going to be talking about panda 3d but i'm not going to get into a huge level of technical depth because i have covered it in the past in this video so i will of course link this video down below as well as this one now this one is all about enabling the render pipeline so you can have a pbr based workflow i'm kind of shocked that didn't actually make it into uh, the panda 1.0 release i really thought that that would be where they would go but they didn't uh, so anyways onto the release itself. So here we are on the new Panda 3D site and they've got a new blog post up describing what went on here. Now, obviously the first thing they talked about is their new rebranding. And if you go back to the root of the site, which I shall do now, you will notice it is, especially if you saw the old site, which was about 10 to 15 years out of date, it definitely does look better. It sells the engine a bit better. There's a bit more pizzazz and there's, you know, better navigation. So I, I do applaud them on the efforts of making things look a little bit better. But let's now get into the details of what's actually in uh, Panda. It's actually 1.10, not 1.0, because the last version was 1.9. I find some of these naming conventions get a little confusing after time. So other than an updated look and a rebrand, what is new in Panda 1.10? Well, we've got, let's see, the rebranding. The big one here is probably Python 3 support. Now, if you don't know anything about Python development, well, probably the reason why you don't is because they had a schism. Uh, back in the days of Python 2, uh, the community developed Python 3 and then kind of fell into about a 50-50 camp of, oh no, this new functionality sucks. I'm gonna stay with the way it was. Or no, no, this is great. And so we basically have had Python 2.x and Python 3.x for the last decade. And they are not compatible. They are not 100% compatible at the library level. It really created a mess in the Python ecosystem. But slowly over time, Python 3.0 or so on, is kind of devolving back into one official language again. More to the point, next year, as you can see here, with Python 2 due to Sunnet set next year, Panda 3D uh, has used this release, release cycle to modernize its Python support code. And that kind of would tell you everything you need to know about Python. Until now, it only supported Python 2.x in the Panda game engine. Well, now, as of this release, you can use either Python 2 or 3, uh, including co um, coroutine supports for those that are using Python 3.5. So going forward, you can now use either Python 2 or Python 3 in the Panda game engine. And then when they ultimately do sunset future support for Python 2.x, Panda's good to go. So definitely a major development there. Another one that happened here is gamepad and joystick, um, joystick support was added. Uh, this release brings first class support for reading joystick gamepad controllers for input on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Uh, nice to see new support. And actually this is one of those areas, if you talk to anyone that develops game engines, cross-platform controller support is always a bit of a pain to add. So it's nice to see this is in there. On top, we've got improvements to the Android port. Now Android is not, um, perfectly supported yet, but it is getting better and more comprehensive in its support. Actually, there is a port of Panda that runs on Android, and that's actually like a host, so you can run Panda Python-based applications directly on your Android device. Kind of a cool project there. So obviously, Android apps can run on um, Android, sorry, Python app, uh, bleh, Panda apps can run on Android and the support is getting better as you saw in this particular release. But major shortcoming as of yet is there's no easy deployment pipeline yet to deploy your game for Android. So that will be a priority going forward. Another major improvement on this particular release is the um, improvement for shaders. Now shaders kind of are working on two levels here. Um, part of what Panda does is um, there's graphic support with the fixed function pipeline in there. And what they've done is they've created a shader generator that makes it easy to use advanced effects without having to write shader. And they took that generator and they improved its runtime performance, removing frame rate chugs and making it more reliable. On top, they also added support for point light shadows and reorientating normal maps. So their existing shader generator got improved functionality. However, if you fall into this category and you want to write your own shader, such as using um, you know, GLSL uh, programming language 
for OpenGL. Uh, they brought many improvements such as GLSL preprocessor support and the availability of more built-in inputs for custom shaders. Uh, improving the sh system further will be a major priority for the next version as well. And then we get into OpenGL. They've also improved their OpenGL and a lot of this was built around supporting profiles. Now, way profiles work is basically OpenGL with version 3.2 said, okay, we're gonna get rid of all of this legacy crap to make it easier for drivers to run. So that means a whole lot of the old fixed pipeline stuff, etc., was just gutted from the OpenGL. And now what you do is when you're requesting or you're creating OpenGL, you say, I want to use the core profile or the compatibility profile or whatever. And then sometimes you've got stuff for way back OpenGL 1.0 functionality has just been gutted from the driver. So this is where this kind of, um, these profiles come in and it says Panda is able to use either of these profiles, but user may now can now specify a core profile through the use of GL version PRC configuration variable, granting full access to the latest extensions and functionality support by the OpenGL driver. So with this update, you are no longer tied to the what version they chose. You can um, you use the latest and greatest extensions if you so wish. Do note, however, that this opts out of the fixed function pipeline support and it's your responsibility to provide suitable shaders in that particular case and they have updates to their deployment system so they built it around the new system is built around the existing python packaging ecosystem leveraging popular python tools such as setup tools and pip in order to make it easier to build your application into an executable regardless of which python version it needs or which external libraries it pulls in again the ecosystem it can be a bit of a mess when you're dealing with python um and they added HarfBuzz, which I've never actually heard of before now, text shaping. Uh, this is a library, a, a HarfBuzz text shaping library, works in concert with FreeType to lay out and rework the text. Also improves English text by replacing certain letter pairs with ligatures to improve re readability. Um, they added FLAC and Opus support. And then across the board, they have done generalized cleanups. Uh, again, I will link the full release notes if you're interested. This is, again, goes into a whole lot more depth of what was actually in this particular release. This will all be down below, along with those other two videos I mentioned earlier, along with one other link. And that link is, of course, to GitHub. The code is up on GitHub if you want to build from source and you don't want to just use their binary version. Um, it is, as I mentioned earlier, under the BSD three license. Um, they've got instructions on how to go ahead and install it. Once again, it uses the Python build system, including pip, which is a tool for Python. I think that automatically installs when you install Python nowadays. And theoretically, you can now use any version of Python to build uh, the Panda 3D library. So that's definitely an improvement. Um, so if you want to build it yourself, the instructions are all here on what you need to do it for both Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Um, and then we've got some details on working from Android as well. But keep in mind, you are going to have some pain points for developing Android applications using the Python library. And that is an, oh, sorry, the Panda library. And that is an area they are in fact working on. All right, so that is it. That is Panda 3D 1.10. Um, some nice updates there. Definitely like the, uh, the updated look they've got going on. Now I did actually mention to you earlier about Vulkan and I forgot to follow up on that. And that's obviously a good question. When they're doing all this work on refactoring their shading system and their renderers and supporting um, newest versions of OpenGL, you'd ask, well, why don't you just port for Vulkan? And obviously that question is going to come up. Actually it did. Here we go. Um, where did we go? That was not the question. Vulcan. There we go. One question I forgot to ask. Is Vulcan support anywhere on the roadmap? It says Vulcan support is something we need to consider a very important goal, though not main priority for the next release. Many of the changes we will be targeting in the next release, such as the improved shader pipeline, will also serve this Vulcan render as well. There's significant stepping stones in bringing Vulcan support closer, so do expect to see progress. So basically, it sounds like Vulcan is in the future, just not in the immediate future, but some of the re-architecting they've done for this release and for the upcoming releases are going to make Vulcan more of a reality. <sighs> okay, so that is it. That is Panda um, 1.10. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already, I do highly recommend uh, you check this video out. It is a very cool engine, especially if you are a Python developer. There's not a lot of great Python engines out there. And then another thing is, again, this is completely open source. It is production and battle tested to make 
MMOs from companies as large as Disney. So this guy does have a pedigree, but it has mostly been used in education for the last several years, and it did seem to be kind of dwindling in support a bit. So it's nice to see these things getting picked up, the rebrand happen, the um, updated version happening. And now maybe that because their website doesn't look like it's 10 years old, people aren't going to think that the project itself is also 10 years old. So let me know what you think. Were you already using Panda? Are you excited about Panda Python 3.x support? Are you going to switch over to the newer version, or are you going to stick with your tried and true Python 2? Or do you just not care at all? Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.